Ten-year-old Enver and his family are war refugees from Chechnya. Now they live in Poland, in Lublin. The city has a history of welcoming people fleeing wars and religious persecution. Until recently, the region had among the lowest per capita incomes in the EU. But now, a city council program unique in Poland is helping provide refugees with housing. Enver's father is also learning Polish while he trains for a job as a truck driver. Lublin is on the eastern edge of the European Union. For this family and others arriving from further east, it's a safe haven where rights are guaranteed. Slowly, I've managed to stand on my own two feet. I've been taking integration courses. I've been learning the language. I have to pass exams. My children have also got used to being here slowly. They don't want to go anywhere else. Whenever I come back from Warsaw now, I feel like I'm coming home. Enver is fitting in well here and is still attached to his own culture. Tonight he's in a dance performance with other Chechen refugee children. The growing Chechen community in Lublin has been well received by the local people. While some came here in search of safety, others come for their education. Lublin is a university town. One out of every three people here is a student. Students come from all over the world. They can count on a high quality tuition in English for one thing and a relatively low cost of living. Lublin has a fair number of medical students from Taiwan. When, there, when we have a problem, you and Owen go talk to the teachers. Is that fine? It's okay. Fine. Okay. As a foreigner, we try to blend in because this is Poland, this is Europe. From where I come from, everything is different. Different building, different people, different language. And this, this is also the reason I choose to study abroad, to explore to the different culture. Diverse Lublin is in the Intercultural Cities program run by the European Commission and the Council of Europe. It's a network to let people across Europe share experiences and work together on challenges in society, which is becoming more and more intercultural. Passers-by interviewed in downtown Lublin talked about this positively. It's quite normal to see foreigners here. There are some projects organized to familiarize people who live here with minority cultures. I don't see any problems. It's more the local people who cause trouble, not the foreigners. Poles also go abroad and expect to be welcomed. People here are part of a global village. We're trying to play our part, to be more open to other races, languages, traditions and cultures. This is good. It enriches us. A lot of cities are visibly intercultural because there'll be a mix of different races. That's less so in Lublin for the moment, even though centuries of shifting borders in this part of Europe have made the region truly intercultural. Lukas describes himself as a Ukrainian, even though he was born and raised in Poland and has Polish citizenship. He identifies strongly with his heritage. He started a music group in Lublin with other ethnic Ukrainians playing traditional folk music. I think I couldn't, uh, I couldn't find uh, any any better place. I'm I'm, I'm pleased that uh, I'm in Lublin. Uh, I found uh, my place. I think so. Uh, and uh, f Lublin is a good place uh, for Ukrainian. It could be all, uh, as we know, it uh, always can be better. But uh, I think uh, that uh, we are building uh, this environment all the time. Some people in Lublin worry that Poland's European integration experience carries a potentially negative risk for cultural contacts with its eastern neighbors. 
Lublin is very nearly on the EU's eastern external border. As a member of the bloc's internal border control-free Schengen zone, Poland is obliged to impose visa requirements on people crossing into the EU. A professor at the Marie Curie University, among the city's top employers, is also head of Lublin's Ukrainian society. He's involved in expanding people's European consciousness. The entry of Poland into the EU made us more open to diversity, which is one of the fundamental ideas of the EU. We can see the consequences of this in Lublin because since Poland joined the EU, we have seen more diversity here. But this is only one side of the story. On the other hand, the Schengen border has considerably reduced cultural contacts with Ukraine and other countries to the east. With its position as a bridge between the EU and its neighbours, Lublin has set itself an ambitious target – to be a European capital of culture in 2016. A member of the European Parliament who represents Lublin says part of the city's strength will be surprise. The city is fascinated by the culture, by the tradition it has, but also about the new trends in culture. And it combines all these elements together. Also, it's a city which really thinks about its history, and about its European future. So I think that the fact that Lublin is considered as a poor, regional, faraway city of eastern Poland, it's so strikingly different from what we see. The City Council, coordinating Lublin's capital of culture efforts, stresses a determination to be outward looking. Our ge geographical location determined uh, uh, our politics, so it was uh, also natural for us that we reached to the east uh, and our immediate neighbors like uh, Belarus and Ukraine, but also Russia, they need to be included uh, in, uh, in our politics, uh, so also we, we're going to include uh, aspects of uh, eastern uh, border of EU in a bit. In Lublin's main theatre, Enver and his Chechen friends are stars. 